In this next section, we're going to look at lines, equations of lines, and how to use those equations to come up with different forms um, and relationships between other lines. Okay. Um, to start off, we're going to look at um, just some of the general information that you're going to need about linear equations in order to do some of the applications that we're going to look at. Um, and the first is just the general form of an equation of a line. Uh, the general form looks like an ax plus by plus c equals 0. Um, <clears throat> in this equation, or in this form, a, b, and c are real numbers, and we assume that a is positive. Um, for a simplified version of this, we like a, b, and c to be uh, integer values, so we try not to have any fractions or decimals in there. Um, so things of the form 2x minus 3y plus 4 equaling 0 would be an example of a linear equation in general form. Okay. Um, the slope of the line, so this is one of the first formulas um, uh, for the linear equations that you are definitely going to want to know. This is one that's going to come back a little later um, and in some of the later classes. Uh, the slope of a linear equation. If I have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, then the slope is just going to be the change in the y values over the change in the x values. Um, and here, even though I've written it as y2 and x2 first, it really doesn't matter which point is first as long as you're consistent. Um, so make sure that the x and y coordinates of them match up um, vertically when you're setting that equation up. Uh, the next is the point-slope form. Um, again, this is another one that you're going to use in some of your later uh, classes. Um, in this form, uh, I would say that the point-slope form is useful mostly for setting up the equation for your linear, uh, for your linear equation. Um, in, in most cases, you're going to be given information and asked to find the equation of a line, and this is the form you're going to want to start with. Because um, once I have a point and a slope, I can generally come up with the linear equation. Um, this is also going to be useful later in calculus when you start looking at derivatives and you're looking for equations of tangent lines. Um, you're you're going to be using kind of the same format. Some of the variables there will change, but it's going to be the same format. Okay. Um, and then this next one, your slope-intercept form, is the third one that's going to be useful. This is the form that you're usually going to want to put the equations in when you're done. So this is the simplified form of your linear equation. Okay? So whether it starts as a general form or it starts as a point slope, you're always going to want to end up here. Okay? This form is useful not only for graphing, and we'll look at that a little bit later, but it's also useful for finding bits of information and solving things. These next two are kind of special situations for your linear equations. Um, and the first is if I have a vertical line. So we'll talk a little bit more about slope. Um, but if you remember from previous classes, if my change in y over change in x and my x values happen to be the same, then I end up dividing by 0, and that's problematic. And so if I have the same x values in here, then what we consider is instead of just saying there's no slope, um, it's an undefined slope, just like the problem says. But more importantly, it, looks, it means we're looking at a vertical line, meaning there's no m in any of my equations. Okay? And so for the vertical line, if it's passing through a point a, b, where you have two points, Whatever that x value is, that's what your line is going to be equivalent to. So x is equal to a. If I have a horizontal line, okay, so the difference there is if it's horizontal, then my y values are going to be the same. And so when I look at my slope, the y's will cancel out, and I'm just looking at 0 over some number or a slope of 0. Okay? And so in that case, because there's no rise to it, it's just the kind of the run, I can think it's going to be whatever that b coordinate is, okay, whatever that rise value is. So y equals b is going to be my horizontal line. Okay. The last two actually look at relationships between lines. Okay. 
So we've got three different situations. Either I have two lines that never intersect, um, I have two lines that intersect at a point, or I have two lines that intersect at a point at exactly right angles. Okay. Um, so the first instance, if they never intersect, then we are looking at parallel lines. And usually you're going to see this notation for parallel lines. <clears throat> so if I have two lines L1 and L2 that are parallel to each other, then the slopes for those have to be the same. Meaning, if I look at the rise and the run here, it's got to be exactly the same as the rise and the run there. Okay. For perpendicular lines, so that's that third case, if I have two lines that intersect at exactly right angles, then these are perpendicular lines. And usually we denote that with that symbol there. It looks like two lines with a little box in the corner. Okay. If L1 and L2 are perpendicular, then to find the relationship between the slopes, we're going to take the negative reciprocal. Okay. So M1 will equal negative 1 over M2. Okay. And then the third case is one that you'll deal with later, um, mostly in trig or sometimes um, your, your upper calculus classes. And that's the ones where it intersects, but it's not at a right angle. Okay. Um, and so those we're not going to deal with right now. You'll see those in a later class. Okay, so let's look at some examples of these. Um, so here, let's say we have two points. So we're going to use these two points to look at a couple of the different things here. Okay, so the first is, let's find the slope of the line between these two points. Okay, so again, like I said, it doesn't matter which point you use first, but be consistent. So I'm just going to call this first point x1, y1 and the second point, x2, y2. And so to get our slope, we're going to do this change in y's. So 5 minus the negative 1 over our change in x's, which is 2 minus 3. Okay, from there we're just going to simplify. So that looks like a 6 over a negative 1, or we're going to have a slope of negative 6. And that's all it is to it for the slope. Okay. Once we have the slope, then we can find the equation of the line. Now, again, to find the equation, I just need a point and the slope. Well, here we're given two points. So again, it does not matter which one you pick. Just be consistent. Okay. I'm just going to use our first point there. So putting it into our point slope form, we're going to take y. And notice in this equation, the y and the x there, they don't have a subscript, so I do just mean the variables y and x. The y1, so y minus my y1 will equal my slope, x minus my x1. Okay, so there's my point slope form, but again, that's not very clean. So we want to clean that out by simplifying it down to the slope intercept form. Okay, so here I'm just going to rewrite y plus 1 equal negative 6x. Here again, we're using that distributive property. Okay. Then I'm going to subtract the 1. And so there's my slope-intercept form. Okay. Um, in this case, if I was asked to graph this line, we could do that. So that's going by twos. This side will go by ones. Okay. So to graph my equation, um, again the slope intercept form, it says my slope or my intercept here is at 17. So that's my y intercept, right? When x is 0, y is going to be 17. And then my slope is negative 6. And again, if we look at that, that is our change in y's over our changes in x's. So if my y's go down 6 units, I'm only going to go 1 unit in the x direction. So going down 6, there's 2, 4, and 6, and then over 1 unit in the x direction. 
and I can keep doing that. So I can go down two, four, six, and go over one unit in that direction. That's a little off. And then same thing, two, four, six, and one unit in that direction. Okay. Another way I can get some points in this line is actually just point plotting. So again, if I've got the negative 6x plus 17, I can say, well, when x is 1, I can see that I'm going to get y equal to 11. And if x is 2, I can see I'm going to get y is equal to 5. So you can either point plot or you can use the slope to get your line. And then from there, it's just a matter of drawing in my linear equation. So there's my graph of my linear equation. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at kind of those last two situations, the parallel lines and the perpendicular ones. So given this equation we've just found, we want to find the line parallel to it passing through the point negative 3, 3. Okay. Now again, in order to find any equation of a line, I need a point and a slope. Here they're giving me the point, and the fact that these are parallel lines tells me what the slope is. So here I know that m is going to be the same as the slope here, so negative 6. And again, my point is going to be at negative 3, 3. So again, I can use my point-slope form. y minus the y value will equal our slope x minus the x value. Okay. From there, I can go ahead and simplify. So again, distribute and then move the 3 over. Okay. So there's my equation of that line. And you can see they're going to be parallel because the only difference is the y-intercepts there. So this one down here at negative 15, I'm going to have my intercept, and then the slope of the line is going to be exactly the same, so going down 6 and over 1. Okay. To find the line perpendicular passing through that point, um, again, I'm going to go back to the line I had. I know the slope there is negative 6, and for perpendicular, I know my slope needs to be the negative reciprocal. So my slope for this one is going to be well, it's already a negative 6, so the negative of that is going to make it positive. And then the reciprocal of that is just going to be 1 sixth. Okay. Again, my point, negative 3 and 3. Okay. So again, for here, y minus my y value equals x, m, x minus my x value. So here we can see when I distribute, y minus 3 will equal 1 over 6x plus a half. Adding 3 to the other side, y will equal 1 6x plus 7 over 2. Okay. And that one I do want to sketch in here just so you can see what these are going to look like. Um, now, again, these are fractions, so it's not going to be exact, but I can still get a sketch of what this looks like. So here, if I look, 7 halves, so it's 3 and a half, that's my y-intercept. So 2, 4, 6, there's 7 and a half. There's my y-intercept. And then my slope for this one is 1 over 6. So again, what that means is for every one unit vertically, I'm going to go 6 units horizontally. Okay. So if I go up one unit there, and then over 6, I'm looking at something like that for a point. Um, or I could go down one unit and to the left 6. Okay. And so here I can see that my line almost looks horizontal. It's got a very small slope. It's not quite horizontal. But if I look at the two lines there, I can see that these are pretty much perpendicular. Okay. Now it's not going to be exact with, you know, 
freehand drawing, but you can see that they almost intersect, at least in the picture, perpendicularly. Okay, so in our last two examples, um, we're going to look at a couple more examples of equations of lines, but now we're going to look at those two special cases. Okay. So in this first one, we want to find the equation of line passing through the points 3, negative 7, and 3, 6. And again, sometimes you're not necessarily going to notice that these are points that have the same x-coordinate. So you can still go through finding the slope and then plugging it into your equation, but it's, it's once you get that slope, it's being able to recognize what's happening. Okay, so for example, in this case, if I look at my m, the change in y, so again, if I think of this as x1, y1, and x2, y2, then my change in y is going to be a 6 minus a negative 7 over 3 minus 3. And so when I go to simplify that down, I can see that I'm going to get 13 over 0. Okay. This means that my slope is undefined. Okay. So for that undefined slope, what that tells me is I am looking at a vertical line. And so in this case, the equation of my line is just going to be the x value of my points. And again, it doesn't matter which point I pick, because the x value is the same. Okay. In this example, we're going to find the line passing through the points 2, 5, and negative 1, 5. Okay. Again, if you don't notice the, the commonality there, you can go ahead and start by finding the slope. Okay. So again, I want the line that's perpendicular through those points. Um, so I'm going to start by getting the slope. So here, change in y over my change in x. Okay. And notice here I switched it on you. So here I'm using, this is my x1, y1, and this is my x2, y2. Again, it does not matter. When I go to solve, Notice I get a 0 over 3, so my slope for this line is 0. Now this is where it's tricky, because I want it to pass through this point and be perpendicular to the line through this with this slope. Okay? So if I think about that, this is a horizontal line. So the only way I'm going to get something perpendicular to that is if perpendicular slope is undefined. So this will give me a vertical line. Okay. Okay. And so here again I've got my slope. I want it at this point. So my equation is again going to be x equals 3. Now again, this notion here you want to keep in mind because there's going to be some equations where you're going to go back and forth between these. And again, anytime I'm looking at something undefined or something zero, um, if you're looking at perpendicular or parallel, keep in mind what that means. So if my slope is zero, I know I'm looking at a horizontal line. If my slope is undefined, then I know I'm looking at a vertical line.